Hey guys, Wave here, and so for another commentary. Yes, it's on Sonic 407 and Rashid 2's video. I'm going to have fun with this, and this will be my first lip commentary. Of course, I'm going to have a different intro for when I upload this to YouTube. But, yeah. Stupid YouTube room in my limits, so, yeah. Okay. Now, the thing is, is that I respect both Rashid 2 and Super Sonic 407. I have more respect for Rashid 2 because Jason makes good commentaries while I get bored from Super Sonic 407. I've been wanting to do a commentary on him for a long time, but this is going to be probably the closest I got. <sighs> so this will be the closest thing I have. This is what I'm going to do there. I thought of many insults I could have made to him, but seeing as how I usually am not an asshole, and I'm certainly going to keep my word and not be an asshole on this, I'm going to make a tally for every time I attempt to make an insult at Brian. So, okay. This is going to be painful. Let's get this over with. First, I'll be skipping the intro since it's entirely worthless. No, it's not. It's supposed to add style to your commentary. Just ask Ken Shimura Wolf. He thought the intro was awesome. No, he's saying that the, com uh, that the intro is worthless because it's uh, all but nothing but moving pictures, glowing stuff, and text, easily done in Sony Vegas. I don't skip intros because I think they're pointless. I skip intros to save time. It's so freaking lazy. Seriously, all it is is just two pictures moving with text. It's easily done in Sony Vegas. And awesome music. Let's just skip it. Speaking of which, wait, 3436 later on has only the pictures of the person who's talking, but I'm going to do it from the beginning. Also, just like in my last commentary, I'll also have to give Super Sonic 407 a link avatar again. If you want to know why, watch my last commentary on Josh Wade for 28. I know Super Sonic 407 said that it's not going to happen, but I'm not taking my chances. Wow, are you really that protective of your channel, mate? Seriously, you wanna you don't wanna risk any chances, so you might as well just change everything else to make sure that your channel stays on YouTube. Wow, you must be desperate. Well Shutsu on the other hand, I will not change her avatar though. Why? Is it because you have the hearts for her? Oh shit. Sorry, Rajatsu. Welcome to another commentary hosted by yours truly. Today we have a special commentary, and as such, I have a special guest. Hey guys. I'm Ryan, also known as Supersonic 407. This commentary is going to be special because we're going to commentate on a commentary. Commentary on a commentary really isn't that special. I've seen people do it before. True. There have been commentaries on commentaries before, but I think I know where he's coming from. I think he's saying it's their first time doing a commentary on a commentary. Either way, if that's the case, it's still not that surprising. Hell, I've done it a few times. Also, possible insult number one, because of the fact that it sounds like he... <coughs> he... <laughs> uh, Wave, are you feeling alright? I mean, I'm just saying, it's just that since you're coughing and stuttering a bit, it seems like you're in a bad condition. My word of advice, make sure you're in a good condition first before you do a commentary. Sorry. See what I mean by possible insult? Alright, let's just ignore that, but seriously. A commentary on a commentary is not new, and then again, my, what I'm doing isn't new either. Shadowstar did it. Which was made by Chief Shadow 1750 and he did this commentary on a guy by the name of Alexander4488, also known as the Game Dude, which he did a Sonic 06 review. Now, this is Chief Shadow's first commentary, and I'll admit, he began with a decent start. No, 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 no! You will not trigger me with that, Yoshetsu! No fucking way! Shadow's... Chief Shadow started good, and he did the whole commentary fairly well. The only flaw he had was tsunami loads of jokes! But as he goes on, he just loses it. I think the same thing could be said about you. Horribly. And we're going to address each of these problems. So, let's begin the madness, shall we? Hello again, I'm Chief Shadow the Hedgehog, and you're not. <laughs> um, was that supposed to be funny? Because I didn't find anything funny in that opening line. It might just be an opening catchphrase. I mean, big brother. Hi, I'm Rashutsu. Hi, I'm Super Sonic 407. Hey guys, we're here. It could just be his catchphrase. After all, this is his first commentary. 
And seeing as he doesn't do a lot of other videos, or at least from what I saw, because after this had a commentary, he removed his commentary on him. I'm just going to skip the rest of his point because he basically repeats himself over and over again. Despite the fact that the point was good? Seriously, matter in all honesty about that, now it was an opening catchphrase, and Wave got that point pretty dang well. So what if he repeats himself? He's just making sure that Rejetsu and Supersonic 407 gets the idea. It was just an opening catchphrase. Nothing wrong with it. Anyway, as you know, I uh, I like the angry video game nerd. Um, I am a I'm a fan of him. I watch his videos and I think they're good. And I also watch the Nostalgia Critic. But there's this internet user here on YouTube that just plains out copies the angry video game nerd. And that person is Alexander4488, also known as the Game Dude. Now, where to begin with this guy? Yeah, I already said that he copies the angry video game nerd. He shows no originality whatsoever. This is something I can see from the irate gamer. He tries to be original, while our Game Dude does not. Chief Shadow had a link to Game Dude's video in his description box, and if you actually go to Game Dude's video, you will notice in his description box... No! No! A description box that Game Dude provides is so contradictory, so doesn't make any sense, it makes me think he's a troll. We are skipping this part. Oh no, you did not just do that. Well, since you skipped that part, I guess I'm going to have to splice it back in. And I'm going to be taking it out. Like what Wave said, it's so contradictory, so hypocritical, and so stupid, it makes you think that Game Dude is a troll. So give me that clip. Well, Shotsu brings up a good point here. She's trying to state that Game Dude is inspired by the angry video game nerd, not directly ripping off. I've said this in my T Deck 1128 commentaries, and I will say it again. There's a difference between inspiration and ripping off. Inspiration is where you take the idea but give the person credit. Ripping off is where you take the idea and don't give credit whatsoever. Heck, you're supporting Chief Shadow's logic, let's twist it your way. Are you calling yourself a ripoff of Shadow Star because you're using Shadow Star's points even if you do give him credit? Is there anyone besides Chief Shadow who can make a video on the game, dude, WITH ACTUAL RESEARCH?! I hope you don't mind me using your clip there, Realm Wars. It was just that. That point was so stupid that I think this was needed, and I do believe that you d could have done a better job than I would have. Keep this in mind throughout the entire commentary. In his earlier episodes, he was called the Annoyed Gaming Geek, and this is something I learned, remembered from quite some time now. But he officially changed his name to Game Dude, and I don't think he's worthy of the name Game Dude. I know I've made minute-long intros for my commentaries, but I at least try to stay on point. What does the Game Dude's backstory have to do with the rest of the video? Absolutely nothing. So you'd rather have us not know about who the Game Dude is for those of us who don't know who the Game Dude is. Really? I think Jeep Shadow was on topic with this one. He was right. We need to, some of us don't even know who Game Dude is. It's better you give us information. It's kind of obvious since you two aren't going to give us any info on Game Dude. Seriously, and I'm trying to sound like insults, but it, but I'm trying to be saying it. It's better we have information on this person for those who haven't heard of them than we don't have any information at all. Okay. Now, if you ask me, I thought Spax Three was the worst reviewer here on the internet, but. Game Dude just takes the cake. Why? Well, I'm going to take a look into his Sonic 06 review. That's right, I'm doing a commentary. And do be aware that this is not going to be perfect, like Realm Wars' butthurt comment. Sorry, Shadowstar, for stealing your argument, but who the hell is Realm Wars for some of us? Because some of us haven't even seen Realm Wars. So why would you make a reference to that? 
Okay, but I can't reference that. Are you seriously making a counterpoint towards someone who hates commentaries now? What? Hold on, let's see Wave's clip again. Sorry, Shadowstar, for stealing your argument, but who the hell is Realm Wars for some of us? Because some of us haven't even seen Realm Wars. So why would you make a reference to that? Okay, but I can't reference that. Either. Okay, as far as I can tell, Wave said this. You got it right with your last point of telling us to game do this, but now you're saying Realm Wars. Can you give us some information on who Realm Wars is at all? I mean, I know in Realm Wars commentary that he said um, that he's not the best, try this guy, he's better. And Wave is pretty much saying this. Um, Meta, how stupid are you not to even notice that Wave said, could you give us some more information about this guy? Because he did it earlier on, but he didn't do it now. Are you really that deaf, dude? Do I need to show you what he said at the end of his I Have Returned video? Well, that's it. I'm done. I'm just going to be moving on. Don't talk to me about the uh, commentary or anything that's happened around that. So I really don't want to talk about it anymore. I just want to. I just want to move on from it. Okay. So that's basically it. I'll see you guys next time. What are the odds of Chief Shadow seeing your commentary or my commentary on your commentary? I think the chances might be pretty high for him seeing Wave's commentary. I mean, think about it. Him and Wave are friends, aren't they? Seriously, at least Rosetta and Supersonic 407 were making their commentary on his commentary before he hated commentaries. And yes, he told me he hated commentaries. And you guys know I, I won't make any counterpoints towards Chief Shadow now because of the video footage I just showed. So, if I do make a mistake or something, I will allow constructive criticism. So, yeah, here we go. And that's why we're here, ladies and gentlemen. You want criticism? Well, you'll get plenty. Sonic the Hedgehog. Because poor literacy is cool. What was the purpose of that? I mean, you knew that Chief Shell was going to use a lot of nostalgia critic jokes later in the commentary. And so, by you using that nostalgia critic joke, you basically milked a dead cow. I'm seeing this, aren't I? He's literally confusing Linkara for the nostalgia critic. WHAT ELSE COULD GO WRONG?! As if the nostalgia critic jokes weren't overused enough. ...is brilliant, and so is Sonic the Hedgehog, but Sonic the Hedgehog is the absolute worst Sonic game ever made. Wow, you could not be more wrong there, game dude. Okay, I know what you're all thinking. I am bashing on his opinion. It's not that at all. I respect other people's opinions, but this is... Here's my problem with this. He's trying to state his opinion as if it was a fact, and that's something I can't accept. He's trying to state that Sonic 06 is the worst Sonic game of all time, which is simply not true, because... If you look, uh, the game Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance... There's your worst Sonic game ever made. And not only that, but the game Sonic Labyrinth also sucked. I've heard reviews of both Sonic Genesis and Sonic Labyrinth, and there was not one thing positive I could find from those. From the way I see it, even if the guy states it as a fact, it is still an opinion. That is true, but the way Game Dude is saying it is he is stating his opinion as fact. I think that's what Chief Shadow is trying to say. He's treating his opinion as fact. It may be an opinion, but if you start to hammer it down after it as fact, that's not good. I will admit, it's not always the best solution to treat your opinion as a fact. However, well, let's just put it this way. Remember my first commentary? Blaziken1234 made a commentary on it, and he said that you don't always have to treat your opinions as opinions. But did you understood what he was saying, no? He said you can't always treat your opinion as opinions. That is true, but you must know whether the thing you have your opinion towards is actual fact first. I mean, for example, what Game Dude was saying there, he was forcing his opinions down over people's throats, Say, claiming them as if they were facts, without even playing any other games of Sonic the Hedgehog outside of the outside of a home console variant, if you understand what I'm saying. That's like saying, and I'm now gonna get another hit from Shadowstar. That's like saying Frost Loss is a better avatar. See how treating your opinion as fact is stupid? 
That's what Game Dude is currently doing. This is why I think he's a troll, people. If he think, takes his words so seriously and gets a butthead when someone tries to give him criticism. That's either because he can't accept it, or it's because most of the feedback he gets is trolling feedback. I honestly don't know. Uh, dude, do you even know anything about Game Dude? Because from what I'm seeing here, Wave has the advantage, since he knows a lot of things about the Game Dude that you don't. Well, since you don't, I might as well just tell ya. <clears throat> you see, when Game Dude gets commentated on of any type of commentator of any sort, he'll reply with a butthurt response over and over again, no matter what. It's a troll! He's only doing this for attention! Never mind, let's just get back to this. And when you say that Sonic 06 isn't the worst Sonic game, but Sonic Game Boy Advance... Wait, 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 what did you just say? But Sonic Game Boy Advance... And... Okay, you may be wondering why I play that clip. Super Sonic 407, there are more than one Sonic game for the Game Boy! Sonic Advance series, Sonic Pinball Party, Sonic Genesis, if you were going to say Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis, why didn't you say that? Seriously, what the hell? And Sonic Labyrinth is, it kind of defeats the purpose of your argument. You say, don't state your opinion as a fact. But your response sounds like you're doing the exact same thing. You don't even acknowledge that it's your opinion. Thus, people will think that you're defending Sonic 06, rather than seeing the flaws in the game dude's review. Despite the fact that we've seen the flaws in Sonic 06 about a hundred thousand times and we do not want to see them again. Oh, and yeah, I might as well just point out this other thing. There might be people out there who actually like Sonic 06. Has that ever crossed your mind at all? I mean, there might be people out there that actually like games that might suck. Also, you're judging these games by what the reviews state. Are you implying that you haven't played the games yourself? Well, later in the commentary, he does say that he has played Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis on the Game Boy Advance. If you're going to make a claim like that, the least you can do is play the games yourself and respond with your own judgment. Okay, Rojetsu, if this will help you in this argument of yours, how about this? I have played Sonic 2006. Does that make you feel any better now? Because if it does, then I'll be more than happy to give you my personal experience of the game during this commentary. Not the judgment of others. Or you could also watch the footage that someone else plays, make your own judgment, see more footage of the game, you get what I'm saying here, you don't need to play the game as lo long as you can have enough, as long as you can see how the game is, as long as you can see enough, you can form an opinion of it. If you don't have the game, if you see the footage of it and get information on it like that, then you're fine. You got the information, you have your opinion. You don't need to play the game. Looks can be deceiving sometimes. I thought Pokemon Ranger Guardian signs would be just as marvelous as Shadows of Omnia because I saw the footage of it, but it ended up being plain boring because the backtracking is worse, especially having to go back and forth using the Big Booker Bridge. That's what walkthroughs are for, Meta. You see, when it comes to uh, making your own opinion on uh, a uh, video game, Let's Plays, Playthroughs, and Walkthroughs are normally the best sort of, sort of information you can get, because not only you can see what's uh, going on, but the, per the person that might be commentating over it will give you some of the experience uh, and all that sort of jazz in return. When it came to Resident Evil 5 when it was out, I had no idea it came out, and that game got me back into the Resident Evil franchise. But I didn't, ha I didn't risk of uh, buying the game off by heart to, just so that I can play it out of sheer luck. No, I watched a walkthrough of it first by a guy known as Buffy Rocks, and then I, then I bought the game knowing that what I saw, I liked. Playing the game in return, I liked it. So it's best to normally look up a playthrough, walkthrough, or let's play before actually looking at a full game entirely. Which takes forever. The signs take forever to draw. The male character doesn't really look cool. The past missions are... Oh god, now he's complaining about character design. ...annoying and repetitive, etc. Granted, I have heard a lot of bad stories about Hotel Mario, Crash of the Titans, Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, and the Zelda CDI games, and of course, 
Sonic 06. So I'll never get those games. So you, to a certain extent, are right that you can sometimes judge a game before you get it. But Roshatsu, to a certain extent, is right also in noting this. Uh, guys, did Roshatsu really point anything out at all on that point? Because from what I heard and seen, that she didn't. Okay, seriously. I'm not going to throw in a giant hissy fit later on once you see the truth. I do agree with the overreact, but I'm going to say my counterpoint when we get there. This ignominy of the universe needs to be buried in the darkest region of Pluto. Just like this I think it's obvious that you find this review to be pretty pointless. So what's the- A lot of people find the game dude's review to be pretty pointless. What's the point of you even saying something like that? This is something I found out with this video and the rest of the video. Only one of them talks throughout one of these segments, therefore making their entrance in this part entirely pointless, since they're not going to say anything. If you're not going to have two people talk, have only one freaking shot of the character that is going to talk in the stream. It makes us think that the other party is going to talk, we find out they don't. What's the point of having them on screen? You might as well have only one character picture on screen, and then have the other one appear. If both of you are going to talk, yeah, yeah, you can have the two of them. I'm just going to be criticism here, saying you don't need to have the two pictures on there if only one's going to talk. Seriously. I'll remind you guys that I fixed it. Now, was there any point in you saying that matter? As retarded as three different Sonic games, all with the exact same name is, must this pile of hedgehog shit be one of them? Okay, this is a completely new game. This has a different storyline. It is not a remake. <sighs> yeah, I can't think of really anything else to say. I guess they were running out of ideas where they were trying to think of subtitle names. You could dub it Sonic 06, Sonic Next Gen, whatever. It's just that you can call it, subtitle it, whatever you want. Like, what if a shitty Mario game, I mean, another shitty Mario game is made, and named Super Mario Brothers? It's a shameful disgrace! Okay, Shadow Sun 11 has stated this in his Shadow of the Hedgehog defense rant, and now I'm going to say it. One game will not kill an entire franchise. Mario does have his fair share of bad games, alright? That's something the Mario fans need to understand. I agree with you on the whole, one game will not kill the franchise thing. Whether one game will kill the franchise or not is a matter of opinion. Despite the fact on how stupid that sounds. I didn't think Pokemon Ranger Guardian Signs killed the Pokemon franchise. I mean, Pokemon Black and White came out after Guardian Signs, and those are good games. I still thought that Guardian Signs killed the Pokemon Ranger side series. Want to know why? Please go back to an earlier point in the commentary. But your Mario comment was not needed. Want to know why? Let's listen to what the game dude said again. Like, what if a shitty Mario game I made and named Super Mario Brothers? It's a shameful disgrace. If you listen closely, he said another shitty Mario game, implying that he recognizes that, yes, a bad Mario game exists out there. In fact, not one, but three. Uh, hold on. Can I listen to what Chief Shadow said again? One game will not kill an entire franchise. Mario does have his fair share of bad games. He said fair share! Fair share basically means more than one. So that means that if you say fair share, that, you, that means you're including more than one game. Since he said that. So, Jetsu, how the fuck were you so deaf to not even hear that? And this will not be the first time that you imply that he is a Mario fanboy. Pay attention to what he's saying before you make a response. I could say the same thing about you, Rajetsu, not being able to hear that he said fair share. This way, you avoid making such a silly mistake. Now, back in the days, Sonic and Tails were the fucking shit. They were Sega stars and the only ones that rocked. Are you counting out Knuckles and Dr. Robotnik? Or Eggman, as whoever you like to call him. They appeared in the earliest Sonic games. Perhaps he neglected to mention them because maybe he felt that they didn't suffer as much as Sonic and Tails did in Sonic 06. It's not a matter of forgetting about them, it's a matter of opinion. A game with a fucking bullshit excuse, sir, is known as the opinion excuse. Ugh, sorry guys, but I'm gonna have to go with Chief Shadow on this department. Why? 
Well, he just plainly said it. If you're going to include those guys, you might as well, as part of your childhood, you might as well include the others that appeared in the childhood games as well. I mean, not saying that you like the Spyro the Dragon in Soniac games, and you like Spyro, but disconnected guys like Sergeant Bird, Hunter, Sheila the Kangaroo, and everyone else. Which, despite what you said earlier, you're kind of showing that you're not respecting it. But too bad they never ride the shit train like everyone else. Now, how does all the Sonic characters suck? Really? Get into detail. Why do the characters suck? Now Sonic's all stretched up and Tails' tails are too big and they're barely attached to his body. What happened to these? Uh, oh, God damn it! we got ourselves another not whole resonant. Isn't that Realmores' gag? Yes. Yes, it is. Despite the fact that Shad Souls and Eleven and GST Superworld uses it. Seriously, guys, in all honesty, that, that argument right there was complete utter bullshit. If you're gonna make an argument like that, at least think first. A gag like that has been used several times, even before Realm Wars. And I've even seen gags that happened in one person's commentary, then somebody else decides to use it in their commentary since they thought it was that good. So, yeah. Oh, and Rajetsu, I would like to point hypocrisy at you. Since Supersonic 47 uses it, used a clip in his very first uh, commentary when he stabbed himself, you used the very same sort of effect when you stabbed yourself when you were doing a commentary on Joshua 8428 on his commentary on Supersonic 407. So, hypocrisy towards you. A facepalm buzzer doesn't mean that it's Realm Wars' gag. I've seen the facepalm done on countless other users even before Realm Wars. Ever hear of Cocktail's Prime? Yes, the buzzer and facepalm are his gag, but it doesn't mean it's copyrighted, so that kind of defeats the argument. Also, you know what? I'm getting fed up of looking at this. I don't think you guys should put up with this. So what I'm going to do is, every time that only one of them talks in the stream, I'm only putting up the picture of one of them, not the both of them, because it makes it really, really annoying. And it saves me a bit of time anyway, so yeah, let's keep going. <sighs> that ends part one of the commentary. We got five more to go. Okay, that was completely pointless. Oh well. See you in the next part, guys, and until then... Have a nice nightmare! Oh wait, I can't say it yet, it isn't the end of the commentary. Damn! Right, this is my second recording, let's get going. Now, before we move on to part 2 of Wave 3 for 36's commentary, let me just give myself some constructive criticism. Sonic the Hedgehog- Because poor literacy is cool! What was the purpose of that? I mean... You knew that Chief Shao was going to use a lot of nostalgia critic jokes later in the commentary. And so, by you using that nostalgia critic joke, you basically milked a dead cow. As if the nostalgia critic jokes weren't overused enough. This is what I should have said. Wave 3 for 36 used a lot of nostalgia critic jokes in this commentary, even when he knows that Chief Shao 1750 also used a lot of nostalgia critic jokes in this commentary, therefore, he's basically milking a dead cow. It's okay to use, like, one or two or three nostalgia critic jokes in this commentary, even if Chief Shadow uses, like, eleven, but Wave 3 for 36 uses six nostalgia critic jokes, which add to Chief Shadow 1750's eleven nostalgia critic jokes, making this commentary have seventeen nostalgia critic jokes. In it. Alright, now let's get on with part two. Meta, must I repeat myself that that is not a nostalgia critic clip? Ugh, yes. This is something many people have forgotten. Game Do was originally the one who started the whole complaints about the looks thing. Alright, he complains about the character's new looks. Emphasize, the character's looks have appeared in Sonic Adventure, and you're blaming it on Sonic 06? Now, listen to them. Okay. With your help, this should be a piece of cake. <laughs> I'll do my best. They're more annoying than Slippy Toad. Thanks, Fox. 
I thought they had me. Okay, there's no way Sonic and Tails can be more annoying than Slippy Toad. True, I may have not played the Star Fox games, but I've heard a lot about Slippy Toad and his voice being annoying. Looks like we got ourselves another Spax 3. How do you know if it's really that bad if you haven't played Star Fox 64? Well, I can answer that like this. It sounds more annoying than Slippy Toad. All you need to do is hear Slippy Toad. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. His chief shadow already saw the clip of Slippy's voice, and if you listen to it, he can form an opinion of if he finds Slippy's voice annoying or not. Because Game Dude already shared the clip of Slippy's voice. He could form an opinion. Alright? I think that explains it. Just because other people may find Slippy's voice annoying, doesn't automatically mean you will too. Just like how a lot of people hate Sonic 06, and yet here you are defending it. Their lips synchronized with their original Japanese voice, but should have been edited to match the horribly dubbed English. Sometimes, their lips barely move. I may not know what Eggman's up to, but it can't be a good thing. Did I forget to mention that this game was rushed because Sega was under pressure at the time of this game's release? Tails used to be so cool. As cute and adorable that he was, he was bad ass. Okay, how can Tails be badass? He's an eight-year-old fox. True, he may be a mechanical genius, and true, he may ride a biplane that can transform into a, a fighting robot, but that's just about it. How can he be badass? If I could think of a badass Sonic character, I think Shadow the Hedgehog right off the bat. Everything you just stated is what many people think makes Tails so cool. Even badass. What is not badass about being super smart and having a biplane fighting robot? I don't think that normally classifies Sunder badass. I mean, yes, it might classify as cool, but not badass. I mean, come on, if, it, if you say all that uh, describing a character, it only makes him uh, seem like a genius, not badass. That registers as badass to me. Again, badass is a matter of opinion. After all, you may find Shadow to be badass, but there's a ton of people out there who don't. Okay, I'm also going to be skipping there. Welcome to part two, blah, blah, blah. Shit, because seeing as how this is going to be one big commentary on Blip, yeah, we're going to be skipping them and it would also get repetitive, so let's continue on. And that was his charm, but he's not a super powerful fox anymore! Quote from Shad Silson 11, OBJECTION! He was never a super powerful fox to begin with. Again, how is Tails super powerful? Get into depth! Now he makes the wimpy moaning noise. <laughs> Drops like a pancake, into the water without a splash, screams like a little girl, and drowns. Okay, first of all, it gains the challenge. It adds to the challenge of the gameplay. Tails' flight is limited. Also, dropping like a pancake? That's common in video games. Because poor literacy is cool. I understand that it's supposed to be pronounce common, but either his microphone fucked up or something else happened. Seriously, dude. I know you're supposed to say common, but if you say conan, dude, you really gotta fix your pronunciation sometimes. It helps. Please refer to what I said last time you made a counterpoint towards Chief Shadow because I refused to repeat myself. What did you say anyways? Drops into the water without a splash. Again, the game was rushed. And screams like a little girl? That's because he is voiced by a girl, Amy Pallant. Yeah, I thought you knew that. Because like Sonic, he doesn't know how to swim. Okay, that Photoshop picture is just plain out terrible. I can kick your ass in Photoshop pictures any- How do you know if he did that in Photoshop? For all you know, it could have been done in Paint, Paint.net, or some other kind of image editing program. Plus, taking body parts, recoloring them, and putting them together in a new pose just to make your character doesn't exactly show prowess in Photoshop. Sure, it may look really cool, but this picture is on the same level as his. Oh god, I want to bring this clip back. Now let me tell you this, I'm a student in an art college, and I've been running some artwork for on media and stuff like that for around about three years now, I think. And uh, let me just say this, the two pictures are not equal at all. I mean, sure, Game Dude might have done it on any other um, software besides Photoshop, but still, it's terrible. Chief Shadows is on a medium side. Hell, it's even good enough to be pro. 
Game Dudes is not. I honestly don't know which one I liked better. I thought Game Dude's picture was hilarious, yet Chief Shadow's picture was awesome. So, why are you acting like you're superior? He can only attack by throwing dummy ring bombs. It's so stupid. Okay, now Shaxel Sun 11 described this in his Shadow of the Hedgehog defense rant, but I'm gonna say, how come that nobody complained about the use of the dummy ring bombs in Sonic Heroes, used by both Tails and Rouge, when they complain about it here in, in this game? It doesn't make any sense. Don't go blaming this game just because it uses the same thing. And besides, dummy ring bombs in this game is a lot more useful than the dummy ring bombs in Sonic Heroes. I mean, those things were fucking useless. I can understand where the game dude is coming from on the dummy ring bombs. In Sonic 06, you were forced to use them, and I too thought they were annoying. And yeah, the dummy ring bombs were used in Sonic Heroes, but the only time you used them was when you lost track of your teammates. Okay, I have had some experience with Sonic Heroes as well, and I have used the dummy ring bombs, and I have to say, those dummy ring bombs are fucking useless! As far as I know, you only throw them right next to you, and you always have them blown up all around you. They're never a projectile-based attack. In Sonic Go 6, they're projectile-based attacks. In other words, you throw them like a grenade. Sonic Heroes... Tails and Rouge just drop them and they explode right next to you. Whenever every other enemy has a range-based attack, where they can kill you from a range without it, you even getting close to them. So the dummy ring bombs are a lot more useful in 06 than they are in Heroes. Which rarely was a problem unless you played really poorly. The dummy ring bombs in Sonic Heroes were also used during some parts of the stage where there were only three switches. So you had to lose a member each. And if you chose to experiment, then you could use the dummy ring bombs as it. Another example would be the Metal Overlord boss battle, where if you kept using Tails repeatedly, you would lose track of your teammates, and the only weapon you could use was dummy ring bombs. So the only time that you... So there are multiple other times in Sonic Heroes which you can use the dummy ring bombs. So, that point was a bit shattered, but I do agree on the whole Sonic 06, you are forced to use them, that's bullshit. But, the Sonic Heroes thing, that's a lie. Honestly, I think that's why no one complained about them in Sonic Heroes. You rarely use them, if at all. They're infinitely crammed up his ass, and look, he can't even pick them back up. Couldn't he at least pick them back up, but not have his ring count increase? Even then it would still be stupid, game dude. I mean, they have the word DUMMY in their names. What comes to mind when you hear the word DUMMY? They're dummy ring bombs. At least that would make a little more sense. Also, throwing them is awkward because you keep accidentally switching to first person mode. That's to help your aiming. I thought you knew this. I'm pretty sure he's aware of the first person view. He's just stating his opinion. He doesn't like it. Bottom line, Kale should kick ass by using himself. Ah oh, yes, yeah. so let a Sonic character go into battle with, that seems to have less stupidity than, than any other character. That seems to be a little bit slower than every other character, and plus has a limited range if he tries to attack things with himself. Tails would get himself destroyed if he was able to, if you were able to play as him and use only himself. Limited range with his attacks, poor durability, and also he is rather slow. I mean, yes, he can fly, that's an advantage, but still, the stats are against him. There should be no dummy ring bombs! Please go back to the explanation about the dummy ring bombs because I am not repeating myself. Why does Shadow drive vehicles when he should be able to run faster and has chaos power? Okay, I can answer your question right there. Shadow has vehicles because they wanted to add to the gameplay value to Shadow's gameplay. This was used in Shadow the Hedgehog and it was also tried to prove that Shadow is a completely different character than Sonic. Alright? Back in Sonic Adventure 2, Shadow was a speedy character. And some people may have called him a Sonic clone, because he runs just as fast as Sonic. So adding the vehicles makes his gameplay a little bit more different. It makes as much sense as Kirby sucking up enemies the giant vacuum. Well, they were sitting around making this shit up. Jumping into the vehicles can be a real bitch, because sometimes the buttons won't respond. Okay, seriously, how are you going to hop into the vehicle when you're, like, a few yards away from the vehicle? Look, bullets are flying up my ass. If I imagine bullets flying up your ass, I would see rapid fire. 
But the fact that I don't see any bullets being fired just proves you're wrong. Game Dude is being sarcastic. It couldn't be any more obvious. Why are you taking everything he's saying so literally when you're not supposed to? Okay, if Game Dude was being sarcastic, then surely we must have seen at least one or two bullets flying at him. I mean, if bullets were flying at his ass, then we would see, well, a few bullets flying at him. But on that clip right there, I don't see any bullets. I mean, I'm going to quickly show you a clip from one of the montages I made, and I'll show you that that is more of a uh, of rapid fire and bullets flying up your ass than what Game Dude is describing. Oh, quick warning, the volume is a little bit loud, so I might suggest for you guys to turn down the volume right now. I know I didn't get any bullets fired at me when I showed that clip, but I know that I, that I was firing bullets like there's no tomorrow at my enemy. So that's known as rapid fire. If, you, if your opponent is firing bullets towards you, then that is known as bullets flying up your ass. And he just won't jump in! Come on! Jump in, damn it! Finally! The controls are stiff and slippery, and you can never slow down fast enough. Damn it! Okay, are you trying to hit the brakes? This horrible truck needs to get out of here quickly! This is the one of the many things that he rips off the angry video game nerd. Are you kidding me? No! <laughs> wow, what an epic fail right there. It's almost no more of an epic fail than IGN making Sonic jump over a jump dash panel. I don't know if we're seeing the same thing or not, but... Falling through the floor is a common glitch in the game, and it happens when you least expect it. Stop, 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 stop! Stop right there! Just stop. Okay, I know I took a lot of time out of this, but I was waiting for this moment right here. Okay, Game Dude went off the track. He broke the sequence. He went off the field, he ran into a glitch because he didn't stay on the track as the game was supposed to do. Die oh, what now? Hold it right there. I know I took some time out of this for five minutes, but I was waiting for this moment right here. That was not a glitch. I'm saying this to both you and to Roshatsu. That was not a glitch. That was a fake platform. That was just part of the background. <laughs> Come on! Okay, now that that's over with, I just want to say this. That was a glitch. Game Dude broke the boundaries and left to an unfinished area. Since that area was unfinished, what was the first thing you might expect? Glitches! Oh, and one more thing. Sonic 06 is an action game, right? An action platformer? What do you expect to be in your ways in an action platformer? Laser grid gates, enemies, turrets, and that platform had none! So if you're gonna be saying that game dude did not run into the glitch, then you're dead wrong, because he went off a map, out of the boundaries, into a glitchy area, where an area that is not pointing in the direction. You know you're going in the right direction in an action game when you see gates, turrets, or enemies in your way. And yeah, he wasn't supposed to go that way, but it was not a glitch. It's actually a fake platform that people can go through that's common in video games. Yes, I understand the game is rushed. Yes, that's no excuse. But the game was supposed to be meant to get to the end of the level, not by going through the mountain. That was a glitch that he chose to discover. But, and that's no excuse. That is no excuse for what he did. He broke the sequence. He was doing sequence breaking, which is a big no-no for games. You do not 
go off the destined path unless you're dealing, unless the programming is good, or it's a racing game. I understand shortcuts, but that was not a shortcut. I'm sorry, I have to agree with Chief Shadow, but that point you made was bullshit. So how exactly is this fail on the game dude's part? He has no control over the glitches. No one does. If there's anyone to blame for that, it's Sega. Sonic Team makes the game, Sega publishes. Those glitches pissed us off. Silver looks like a mutated owl. Look, just because he looks different than the other hedgehogs does not mean that he's bad, all right? Silver is a pretty cool character. I mean, a hedgehog that comes from the future that has telekinesis, that's a pretty interesting thing. Yeah, I mean, it's not like we've seen a character like that before. I'm being sarcastic. Sorry, but seriously. Time for- Uh, Meta, when I saw Wave's commentary, I saw a picture of Trunks on it. You know, Trunks from Dragon Ball Z. And that one statement. Why the fuck did you leave that bit out? For you to disappear! You should disappear, but if you're not careful, he'll toss you around against the sides of an invisible box. As far as I was told, Silver the Hedgehog was an easy boss. <laughs> you're getting your ass kicked by an easy boss? Oh my god, dude. Oh. Okay, if you were able to run around the city against Silver, and if the battle arena is where you are at right now, then that pr basically proves that you are pretty much a coward if you try to run away from the battlefield. Uh. And there goes another Realm Wars face palm. Once they climb into a wall, they're like permanently stuck. <laughs> Try holding the button! Or maybe actually turn on the PS3 controller. I'm pretty sure that the PS2 controller was... turned on. PS2 controller! He said PS3 controller! How could you miss here something like that? Also, let's have a look at the game dude's shots, shall we? Anyone notice something besides his little... Yay Winter Sports text? Well, simple. Anyone who owns a PS3 controller knows, or a PS3 in general, knows that when they turn on the PS3, you would see flashing red lights at the bumper of the controller. And since there was no flashing red lights, that means the PS3 controller was turned off. An example. Controller off. Controller on. I mean, he kept pressing the button, and because he was pressing the button, Rouge kept, like, jumping like that, but, like, she couldn't get off the wall because of the stupid glitch. Again with insulting him over game glitches! I said this in my last commentary, but I didn't find anything in that comment. In this case, all Chief Shadow said was try holding the button. I mean... I didn't hear any insults in that. It's not his fault that he can't get off the wall, because other people had the same problem. There are videos on YouTube that show the glitches in this game. Even Darkness the Curse noted some of these glitches when he remade his review of Sonic 06 before he closed his account, and that glitch with Rouge was one of them. You can actually still find his review under the Darkness Archives. In fact, let's let him explain this whole glitch issue, shall we? I'm gonna skip this part, because all it really just shows is proof that it is true that Knuckles and Bruce get stuck on the wall, but the problem is that Game Dude was acting like Chris Bores whenever he tries to play a video game. I think that was kind of why he insulted him, because it looked like he wasn't even trying to play the game. Please refer to what I said to Roshutsu about a minute ago, because I refused to repeat myself. No! I don't know. Out of that, it was him like... I thought oh, it was game dude acting like a but like an idiot on steroids or something, but yeah. We're gonna skip this part because it's already been hammered in that there's a glitch here. And most people who I know have already seen Darkness's review. So yeah, we'll skip it ahead. And I know Sega rushed the game and while it may explain it, I'm sorry, it doesn't excuse it. It's the game's fault, and you should be aware of these glitches he's coming across. I mean, you are defending the game, so you should know this inside and out. Just because he's defending the game, 
Doesn't mean he knows everything there is to it. So, if I may be so bold as to suggest, go play the game again and do some research before you decide to insult him. The way I'm seeing it, you're insulting him for the sake of insulting him. Rauber's commentary of Chief Shadows, I don't think he has made at least one insult directed towards Game Dude, so I feel how he was insulting, to see how he was insulting in him at all. Also, you're saying that, uh, since he said try holding it, I don't think that's necessarily counted as an insult. At all. I mean, if you want an insult, this is an insult. Shut the fuck up, you wrinkly old cunt. That is an insult. And I'm sorry if that offended you at all, I didn't literally mean it. I was just trying to describe an actual insult, because what Chief Shadow said was not an insult. Get off the wall, you slutty fat bitch! Oh, and they can magically swim in the air. Knuckles is gliding! Big difference! Look at Knuckles! Okay, that's you that was trying to do that, and that just shows that you are not funny yet. Now, remember when Sonic didn't suck, and how every single square inch was enriched with majestic dreamlike atmospheres beyond imagination? That was a long time ago. Ugh, why does everybody get so hard about this game and saying that this is the death of Sonic? There has been good Sonic games after Sonic 06 came out. Same with Shadow the Hedgehog. There was good Sonic games after that game came out. Sonic Unleashed is a really great game. I only played the PS2 version, and it was a blast to play, especially the daytime stages. Now, think for a moment. Think, huh? Well, how about you try thinking for a moment, game dude? Because, as far as I know, you barely even think at all when it comes to video game reviews. But what should Sonic be like? This or this? Do you feel like you're looking at a Sonic game? Actually, yes, I do. Okay, right here is where part one ended. Danny and I thought this commentary was off to a decent start. Yes, he had flaws, and most of them were forgivable, since this is his first commentary. But they were nothing compared to the rest of the commentary. The rest of the commentary was all that good. This commentary was decent overall for his first one. But the problem is, is that you have little to no knowledge of a game dude. That is a big, big, big killer in your commentary. If you have nothing to know about Game Dude, then it kills the purpose of you doing this commentary because everyone knows that Game Dude sucks and they all hate him. And it po makes me ponder why you don't. I know I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite here, but can you please stop changing the facial expressions on the characters every five seconds? It's really annoying and it really just shows that you don't want to lip sync the characters or something. It's supposed to make their video entertaining so that you don't have to stare at the same picture. Well, Meta, let me know, let me tell you this. If you change him really rapidly, far too many times, it becomes very annoying very quickly. Because if you want to have this many actions, I really think that you just don't want to lip sync the rhythm of character voices. And yeah, okay. Can you please just stop freaking using so many animated picks at the same time? It gets annoying. <laughs> Okay, that was pointless! You'll see why when we get to them. No, you don't. Absolutely nothing about this catastrophic abomination resembles the classics. Just because a game does not resemble the classics does not mean that the game sucks, alright? Exploring around Soliana is just like exploring around Station Square from Sonic- Sonic doesn't belong here! Uh... Unbelievable. God damn it! That's it! We're starting some tallies! Okay, you're gonna make some tallies about a gag that was used before Realm Wars? That makes no sense. I want you guys to keep this in mind when they say they're gonna do some tallies. Because there are some clips that Chief Shadow uses that they don't make a tally of. As a result, since they couldn't do it, I'm gonna point out the tallies. I think the reason they didn't tell you those ones is because Chief Shadow only used like one to five of them. But the comedic standard for every single joke is free. Any more and the joke is killed. Also, let me tell you this. The jokes that they missed out were jokes from some of our uh, parts uh, that 
that Chief Shadow uses. For example, that stand-up clip, they you know, use several clips of one of those guy of that one joke from that one guy, yet some other jokes that the other guy uses, they've forgotten to tally up. So, at the moment, he has used one George Carlin clip, and he's going to use more clips from other sources of media later on. Also, I will be correcting some mistakes that they make, because there is going to be one giant effort that Rishutsu and Ryan make. So, let's begin, shall we? Okay, so that's three Realm Wars face palms. Some hey, wait, 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 you're cutting back to the video already? They mentioned the Ripper- Oh, I see. You think the Ripper clip is under copyright infringement. Well, that's one big epic fail, because it's not. Sonic doesn't belong here? Are you trying to say that Sonic doesn't belong in Soliana? Which is just an area to explore? And that's exactly why he isn't here, because this is Sonic, not this! <laughs> Uh, technically for a Realm Wars face palm to go off, he would have to play the buzzer and the face palm at the same time. Earlier, you said that it wasn't a Realm Wars face palm. <sighs> Meta Wave was inclining that since Rujetsu and Supersonic 407 are insisting on that face palm of being a Realm Wars face palm, the name must know that Realm Wars face palm is the buzzer and the face palm at the same time. Not the buzzer, then the three face palms after. And that there have been other buzzer slash face palm things like that before Realm Wars. Besides, I'd still count it as three because it was basically a buzzer followed by a triple face palm. He only played the buzzer once and face palm three times, therefore I don't think it would count because I'm sorry, but a Realm Wars face palm would have to be a buzzer and the thing. In order for it to work you'd have to play the buzzer three times. I'm sorry, but that only counts as one face palm, so let's go fix that there. That, ironically enough, is where Meta's second part ended, guys, so I'll see you in the third part of my recording, that is. These parts are taking so long that it's even unable to give Final Fantasy a run for its money on how long those games are. Alright, let's continue with the third recording and part four. Looks like I made a mistake. Remember this joke that Wave 3436 used in part one and part two? So because poor literacy is cool. I was wrong about that joke. It appears that wasn't a nostalgia crit joke, but it was really a Linkara joke. Well, it took you long enough to even figure out that that was Linkara and not the nostalgia critic. In fact, let's put them next to next. Here is the nostalgia critic, and here is Linkara. Are there any similarities between the two at all? No, there is not. I looked it up, and it appears that, that Linkara was something from this one thing called Spoonie. I also skipped the Ripper clips because it appears that I thought they were copyrighted when they really weren't as copyrighted as I thought they would be. Oh, and Chief Shadow used two of them. Two of the same one, and Roshutsu and Supersonic 407 tallied it. Knew it. I knew it. The guy removed him from copyright infringement. Somebody owes me a drink, eh? Who owes me a drink? Alright. Now let's continue the show. Oh, God. Another fucking fanboy. Oh, God. Stop hitting yourself! Stop hitting yourself! What? Oh, okay, right. Like, I was the only one thinking that. Yes. Yes, you are. Alright, just because Sonic is taller, has green eyes, and more quills, doesn't mean that the character looks as sucks. God, you're just like a knothole resident. The town is also a horribly bad ripoff of Delfino Plaza. Everything is similar, especially the buildings. Okay, I'm looking at this image right here, and I do not see any resemblance 
to Delfino Plaza with Soliana. I really don't. So what are you trying to say? That it rips off? Prove it. Let's take a look at the picture again. Well, I do find some similarities in how the buildings are shaped, especially with the window patterns and the way the roofs look. I also find it similar when they have the canals in the city and how the trees look. So the game dude is technically right about this. What the game dude doesn't even know is that the maps are shaped differently. In other words, the canal systems go at different angles, and the buildings, yes, they are the same shape, but they're put in different places. And you know why? Because both Delfino Plaza and Soliano are based off of Italy. When they're based off the same country, of course there are going to be similarities. So, Chief, you are right about Soliano not being a ripoff of Delfino Plaza. But the game dude to a certain extent is right too in noting these similarities. Similarities, yes, but everything else might be different. I know this because uh, when it comes to certain video games, and I thank Rooster Teeth, I'll leave a link to the channel in the description, I thank Rooster Teeth for pointing this out in one of their videos. If you ever heard of a certain place in New York City that kind of behaves at Las Vegas at night, I forget its name, when you look at it from a map's perspective, it's all like, seems like two arrows pointing together, that one. Anyways, if you play the game Spider-Man 2 and see on your map and you see two arrows pointing together, that's the place I'm talking about. That place has been used in several different video games before, but it, I just can't even count how many there are. So yeah, there are some places around the world that are based in video games, but some will have different designs, different themes, or even different shapes than any other, any other video game has. Oh, and look, even the portals preview the levels. First off, that's a good thing because you know where to go. Second off, well, Chief Shadow will explain the rest. Was there even any point in that meta? That gimmick has been used in several other games before Mario Sunshine. Ugh. Spyro and Crash Bandicoot has done the exact same thing, and they were before Mario Sunshine came out for the GameCube. Even worse, it annoyingly serves as a constant interruption between the levels, which aren't as bad as this, but that's not saying much. Okay, I absolutely have no idea what you're trying to say right there. Anyway, couldn't I at least play the damn levels consecutively, the way all levels should be played? Well, it makes the game a little bit shorter. And besides, all games allows you to free roam around the city. The only exception is having to return to the Mushroom Kingdom, because it's magic. This just proves to me that you are a fucking Mario fanboy. You're saying that all the games must be played consecutively, except for Mario 64, which allows you to return to the Mushroom Kingdom. Unfucking believable. This guy is unfucking believable. But this, this is a hideous pile of fucking shit! I actually think it looks beautiful. Then again, both it and Delfino Plaza are based off of Italy, like Supersonic 407 just said like a minute ago, and like, I currently am playing Super Mario Sunshine, which Delfino Plaza is the main location there. And having to return to it is the biggest waste of time! Okay, you need to explain a little bit more on why Soliana sucks. Okay, all I'm getting is you just hating on it. You need them to go more in depth. Elaborate, motherfucker. Okay, I'll agree with you on that one. He should definitely elaborate. Just because you're doing a commentary on a commentary doesn't exclude the original video that the person you're going to be doing a commentary on. Um, that doesn't even make any sense. But seriously. Just because you're doing a commentary on a commentary doesn't exclude the original video creator from the equation. If you had a problem with it, you could have brought it up. I agree with you, but let's hear what Chief Shadow said again. Okay, you need to explain a little bit more on why Soliana sucks. Okay, all I'm getting is you just hating on it. If you listen closely, Chief Shadow told Game Dude to explain why Soliana is a terrible place. So that's why Supersonic 407 and Roshatsu didn't commentate on Game Dude there. Mind if I listen to what Wave said again? Just because you're doing a commentary on a commentary doesn't exclude the original video that the person you're going to be doing a commentary on. Um, that doesn't even make any sense. But seriously, 
Just because you're doing a commentary on a commentary doesn't exclude the original video creator from the equation. If you had a problem with it, you could have brought it up. Well, Matter, it seems like you didn't pay attention. Again. What Wave was inclining was that since they agreed with him on that point, there was no need for them to say anything at that point. Granted, they could have also commented on Game Dude in other parts of the commentary. Why didn't you exactly? That's just weird. But you're sounding like you're stressing out over this. Calm down a little, will ya? Towns and cities need to dazzle with that sonic atmosphere. The directions are stupefyingly, moronically idiotic. How does that make any possible sense? It makes perfect sense! It makes jack crap sense. Whatever comes out of Game Dude's mouth makes jack crap sense. It's stupid! Sonic, can you hear me? Unfortunately... Knuckles wants to see you! Send them a photo of my blue ass! Ugh! Oh, that's just a great image to get in my head. Ugh. You're trying to be funny, but you're not. You're trying to rip off the angry video game nerd, and you succeeded. But in a very bad way. Wouldn't it be easier to say, you're ripping off the angry video game nerd, but you failed at it? Succeeding badly is the same as failing. But wait a minute. If they both have the same meaning, then why are you complaining about it? Number two. Head to the town's warehouse. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to know what the town's warehouse is? The town is too big, everything looks exactly the same, and the map is useless because the only thing it pinpoints is your location. Not exactly. If you look closely at those yellow dots, they, those represent the people that you can talk to and maybe do town missions. So no, the map is not entirely useless. It wouldn't hurt to explore around the city. Now, Yes, there are yellow dots on the map, but that's not what the game dude is asking. Why even bother bringing up the yellow dots in the first place? Oh, okay, simple. You see, when it, came, when it comes to Sonic games, you're going to have... Certain amount of people you're going to interact with, no matter what. And in this Sonic kind of games, you're pretty much going to be interacting with everyone in uh, Soliana, so that you can uh, do missions, get upgrades and power-ups, and obviously they can give you directions. Like, for example, it could uh, give you a waypoint or something like that. Simple as that. If you really want to refute him, then answer with something relevant to finding where you need to go on the map. Not the people you can talk to! So let's face it, you're always gonna be lost, and believe me, I'd rather be lost at the worst place of Ant- Okay, looks like we're gonna have to skip this part because of the fact that it's just another <laughs> pointless moment. Oh goody! We get to start another tally! Hooray, we're gonna start yet another pointless tally on something that has been done to death in nearly a whole lot of videos before Chief Shadows. Wow. A tally on something that stupid? Even if it was done as a joke, the guy might not have known that a nostalgia critic has done that joke. On second thought, scratch that. If a guy decides to say that it was a pointless moment and use it as a joke, yes, a nostalgia critic has done his own, but let's say somebody did not know that a nostalgia critic does his own and uses a pointless moment thing as a joke of his own. Does that count as a nostalgia critic, Tally? I don't think so. Now, the humans are monstrosities, don't belong in the Sonic universe, and need to be massacred immediately. God, why is it that people don't complain about the humans in Sonic Adventure, Sonic Adventure 2, and Shadow the Hedgehog, and yet they complain about the humans appearing in Sonic 06? This makes no sense whatsoever. Why don't people complain about the townspeople in the Sonic Adventure games or Shadow the Hedgehog? Simple. You weren't forced to interact with them. Oh yes, you could talk to them, but for the most part, that was all you did with them. They were part of the scenery, and could easily be overlooked. That's why nobody complained about them then. But in Sonic 06, now you have to talk to them to get missions in order to progress through the game. And if you felt that Sega did a crappy job with them in the game, then you're not going to have fun interacting with them at all. 
that still sounds retarded. There were just submissions, things that you could do outside of the actual levels. Those things could be easily ignored. And if my experience was correct on me, some of them are even optional. They're absolutely retarded. <laughs> Maybe they didn't have the budget to try to hire other voice actors to do the townspeople. And besides, it wouldn't kill you to fucking read the subtitles. Yeah, but reading the subtitles won't stop the humans from making those ridiculous noises. That's what the mute button is for. And clones are everywhere, silently expressing how shitty this game is. This one is just plain fucking stupid. Couldn't have said it better myself, George Carlin. There could be more than just that. They could explain on how shitty this review is. Everyone knows you can't have a Sonic game without an accordion player. Okay, you said in an earlier point that the humans need to be massacred immediately, and yet you're just going out and say that this guy, every Sonic game needs an accordion player? Why are you taking everything he's saying so literally? And why the fuck are you defending a guy that we are supposed to hate? It's clear he's just trying to make a joke! <laughs> Game dude, making a joke. <laughs> oh, won't that be the day. Whether you think it's funny or not is a matter of opinion. Would you really find Game Dude funny? But it's so obvious that it was not supposed to be taken seriously. Did you even read his video description? Bah -ha! Thank you, SP Farm U, for the link to this video. Thank you a whole lot. Why? I'll tell you why. Now, SP Farm U has given me the link to Digimon Tamer's uh, video when he is reading the description of the game, dude, and basically points out the massive flaws. So, Rujetsu, Supersonic 407, listen carefully to what he has to say. I say that's bullshit. Let's think about this logically for a second, people. If these really were satirical reviews, why does he still sometimes give positive reviews? How would that make sense? If these are all meant to be uh, satirical reviews, what's the purpose in reviewing some games positively? That goes against the entire point. If these were satirical reviews that he was just doing as a joke, he'd say, eh, Star Fox is a terrible game, and laugh his ass off in his own room. There would be absolutely no need to do a positive review. Oh, and uh, most of those major flaws that he brings up, yeah, they're not even really there half the time. You want a good example? Go watch his Star Fox Adventures review and note when he says, uh, even when you're really far away, and I mean really far away, look how close that enemy is to him. You'll notice that it's not the fact that the enemy's far away that's bugging him, it's just the fact that he's, he's on the other side of a wall. A wall that you can, in fact, break through! Now, under the part where he says, I like all the games. Are you fucking serious? You liked Sonic 06? I mean, I did, but I got it for like 20 bucks. You probably paid full price for it, so you would have every right to hate it. The problem isn't that you dislike games that we like. The problem is you never bring up a good point. You bitch about how the characters suck, but you never explain why. You bitch about how the controls don't work, but they when uh, you don't even explain how they don't work. You bitch about how uh, the uh, Shadow's vehicles don't have brakes, when they do have brakes. That is the reason people say you're a talentless hack. It has nothing to do with the fact that you review games that people like. Like I said in my first commentary on you, I had no problem when people disliked Shadow the Hedgehog because they still brought up legitimate points. I was just able to look past those points. You, however, bring up points that are just unbelievably retarded. And don't try and claim that they're satirical. They are not satirical. If they were satirical, you wouldn't give any positive reviews. Finally, the part where you say, don't take this too seriously. Need I remind you that it was because of your comments I was able to change the name of my Kirby commentary from two peas in a pod to this video was up ten minutes and Game Dude commented on it nine times. Not only does this imply that you yourself take it pretty fucking seriously, but the comments you left were outright defending your points. If these are just satirical reviews, why do your points need defending, genius? 
everything of what Digimon Tamer says in that one length of comment, and that was over three minutes, by the way, was 100% accurate. What you and Supersonic 407 is doing here is 100% inaccurate. Or did you just ignore it? Now, the worst of them all is Elise. This half-white, half-orange slut shares a romantic relationship with Sonic. How is she a freaking slut? Go in depth on why Elise is a freaking slut. I do not see a slut in Elise. All she is is just a damsel in distress. How can she be a slut? Just chaos black! I can't watch this. I'm afraid this nightmare is going to lead to animated hentai bestiality or something. Sorry, I'm going for two! Chaos Black! Ah. Uh, I gotta ask you this. Why? Why are you using a nostalgia critic joke twice in a row? Was it really that necessary? Well, I'll give you an answer. When the Nostalgia Critic actually uploaded that episode of his, that joke was executed twice in a row. So yeah, that joke being executed twice in a row sort of makes sense since the Nostalgia Critic did upload it twice in a row as well. I know you're trying to be funny and all, but there are other jokes you can make besides ones from the Nostalgia Critic. Okay, I'm going to sum this up really quickly. This game does not promote bestiality because bestiality means sexual intercourse between a human and an animal. In other words, a human and an animal having sex. We do not see that anywhere in the game because if it happened in the game, the game would have been rated adults only, not everyone 10 and up. Get that through everyone's fucking skulls, including you. Like the nerd always said, what were they thinking? I hope Amy beats the shit out of this fucking bitch. I beg to differ. She only appears in one Frickin' game. That's it. That's all Sega was targeting. One game for Elise to appear. This guy is unfucking believable And Spoonie did make other videos besides the Let's Play of The Ripper. This one clip is getting annoying really fast. Just like how you keep enforcing that the game dude is just doing the pick around that shouldn't be taken seriously. That isn't totally getting annoying. Okay, okay. That concludes part three. Wait a minute. Part three. Yes! You know what that means? Yes! We're halfway there! Wow, Meta, that was so pointless that I could not believe it. Needs to go back to Final Fantasy where she came from. If you have time to worry, then run! The missions aren't retarded, they're vegetables. Ugh, seriously, Rujetsu, Supersonic 407, you heard of that joke, right? You know how bad it was. Why didn't you comment it over it? How does that make any possible sense? Oh, they're not retarded, they're vegetables. I do not see any, any logical sense in that. In this one, all you have to do is keep talking to the first person you see, and that's it. Nothing else. Okay, that's maybe a point there. I mean, then again, Tau missions can be a little bit repetitive. That was incredible! Yeah, an incredible piece of shit! <laughs> now, why is there a store in a Sonic game, and why does it sell only one of one item that only benefits me? Okay, the reason why there's a store in the game is to buy upgrades and make use of the rings in the town. Also, other items can be available in the store once you get through a certain point of the game. It's not like anyone else is gonna buy the light chip. What is Tails doing? I don't know, maybe just another... <laughs> pointless moment. Look, even the soccer ball sinks without a splash. What a fucking circus. I am not repeating myself. 
Loading screens are everywhere, and you can actually beat a few levels from the classics before the end. Look at the random instructions that should only exist in the manual. They're simplified to the point where they don't make any sense. Okay, seriously. You only played the final part of the level. If you were trying to prove that you could beat the level faster than the loading screens, then you should have played the entire level and shown that. The graphics are realistically ugly when they should be stunningly cartoonish. Okay, this game was released for the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. Of course the graphics are going to be realistic, and I don't find the graphics too bad. If you want cartoon graphics, play on the Wii. I know the Wii has a lot of cartoony looking games, but there are realistic looking games for it too. The Conduit, the Cabela Hunting series, I saw a Call of Duty game for it, Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, the latest Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles game, not to mention, there are cartoony looking games on the PlayStation 3 and the 360, the Sega All-Stars games, Wait, the Sega All-Stars game are cartoony? That's odd, it looks kinda realistic. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, Huh? The newer Crash Bandicoot and the Spyro games. What? Viva Pinata. Bujetsu, have you even seen any of these games? They're not cartoony. They have realistic like graphics. The point I'm trying to make is don't expect a specific system to have only a specific style of games. Specific type of games? Don't you mean specific type of graphics since that was G Shadow's original argument? Also, that's a stereotype for each console. The PS3 and Xbox 360 have a stereotype for having glossy, edgy, realistic graphics. The Wii is pretty much has a stereotype for being known as cartoony. I think that was kind of the reason why he assumed that, because it is a stereotype. True, but what Roshetsu is trying to say is that not all Wii games have cartoon graphics, and not all PS3 and Xbox 360 games have realistic graphics. Okay, mate, it's time for a lesson in hard drives. And by hard drives, I mean graphic drives. I wasn't trying to be funny if you were thinking it. Anyways, <clears throat> when it comes to graphic drives, certain graphic drives on each console can handle each game in a different way. For example, the Nintendo Wii. If you try to put a realistic game on it, it will nerf it down so that it can become cartoony. The PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. If you put a cartoony game in it, bada bing, bada boom, it will edge it so that it will be realistic. Either way, if a cartoony game has a ch is trying to make itself cartoony on a console like that, it will become realistic no matter what. I've seen all sorts of games on a PS3, even ones that have tried to become cartoony, like Little Big Planet, and no matter what, they always send up, ended out realistic. I can say the exact same thing on the Nintendo Wii and its cartoony graphics. It may not be true, but it is a stereotype. And, <clears throat> be ready folks. Because after this next point, they're gonna go, they're gonna blow it so out of proportion that the tires are gonna, of the car will go two cities from the destruction site. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Again, do your research before you make such a statement. The level design is bad. Almost nothing is reminiscent of the classics. I actually find the level design to be rather good. I may have not played it, but it looks good. <laughs> I may have not played it, but it looks good. There's an annotation that he added which states, and I quote, I may not have played this, but I do know a lot about it. Do you even know what you've just done, Chief Shadow? You just ruined the entire point of making your video! What? Well, no wonder you kept getting on his ass for no reason when he's talking about gameplay issues. I beg your pardon. You haven't been able to properly refute him because you have no clue what he's talking about. You can only judge a game so far without playing it. And yet you're trying to talk back to him about everything in that game. I beg your crap. You're just using this commentary as an excuse to insult somebody. What? You'll go so far as to call the game dude a Mario fanboy, but with this new little tidbit, you don't even realize you cemented yourself as a fanboy. I beg your bullshit. Somebody makes a video review about a Sonic game, mimicking the angry video game nerd style. And what do you do? You get all defensive. It's Michael Dragon 800 all over again. 
Get your ass over here! Ow. Okay. Where do I start? Number one. I said this already. If he can form an opinion and get his information, and he hasn't played the game, but he does know his information, enough to understand about the glitches and shit, that's perfectly fine. And I said this already too. I'm trying to keep myself from screaming. If I was to scream, that insult mark would have reached 10 by now. Alright. 2. How in the hell is this an excuse to insult somebody when the game dude's points were completely flawed in every conceivable way? And no, do not give me that excuse. Oh, this is a parody. That is not a parody. That is just shit. Playing that right, shit. No, I gotta get back on top of it. Okay. <clears throat> What do you think that people like Roy Havenstone are for? They make parodies. They know what a parody is. Game Dude is making a lot. It's Melee Master 01 all over again when she parodied for what parodied Brawl Master. Do not give me that bullshit. Oh my god, okay, I haven't even gone on this. Dude, how the fuck do you know that? He could have made the review because the review, I don't know, SUCKED! Okay? Oh my god, my head hurts. And no, it's not like Michael Gray 900 all over again, because he does understand that, that there are some bad Sonic games, and that, well, yeah, I'm just, oh my god, I'm losing my points right now. <clears throat> Bottom line is, is that you just lost every conceivable way that even made sense. You blew it way out of proportion and believed what you wanted, but you freaking over blew it and I'm repeating myself. God damn it. You have lost it. You've lost the point. I give you no arguments. You lose. And I am back. Seriously. Rougette Sue. Supersonic 407, that is the worst argument that I have ever heard in my entire life. You have no idea on how much rage I went through because of that one little comment that you said. Wave is right. You can still form an opinion on a game even before you've played it, which makes that argument of yours completely flawed. Fuck that. It makes your entire commentary completely flawed. You lose! No. Wait a minute, Meta, was that your... It was, wasn't it? <sighs> Until the next part. Before I begin this edition of the Helsing Files, I just want to quickly say that I apologize for accidentally taking the name of one commentary and using it for my own. You see, I didn't even know that Stephen the Master's commentaries were called the Nightmare Commentaries before I named mine the Nightmare Commentaries. But uh, I have to thank the Heartless09 for giving me the name for the Helsing Files. I actually find, I think it's a pretty good name, so I'm going to be using that instead. So let's continue with the Helsing Files. And you know what's good about it, guys? That's right, only two parts of his video left! If you want to talk about him being an angry video game nerd ripoff like how you originally said you were going to do, then focus on that alone. You at least know what you're talking about there. And you're forcing me to repeat myself. Just because it's not the same as the classics does not mean that the game sucks. There's a lot of pop-up. Tree, no tree. Tree, no tree. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong guys, but wasn't the PS3 and Xbox 360 released in 2006? So you might have been expecting pop-up graphics like that to be happening a lot? That's common in video games. Invisible walls are everywhere. I don't find that to be a big deal because invisible walls are common in video games. Play the God of War games. There's no rumble. Look how bad the camera is. Okay, are you even trying to rotate the camera? 
Or maybe he's just trying to show how weird and unreliable the camera can be at times. By sucking on purpose? In all honesty, Rajetsu, you should have expected a game dude to do something like that, because he sucks on purpose all the time. Scratch that. He sucks at every video game he plays. Forced or not, even the angry video game nerd has to play bad on purpose for a part of his review, just so that he can show what he's trying to explain. Here's a problem, though. He sucks at everything he tries in a video game review. Don't believe me? Watch his uh, Sonic Heroes review, and you remember that rail part when he said, Oh yeah, that's fair, put a rail there. If you put a gap there, sorry. If you were expecting a gap to be there, well, you're skilled. But if you weren't like Game Dude, well, you're gonna die. That's why. But if you had actually played the game, you might have known that. I refuse to repeat myself unless you want to hear me break my computer screen. I'm not repeating myself either. And I refuse to repeat myself in order to listen through your stupid marks of games so that I can skip through them before I have to slit my wrist. You're complaining about a glitch. That wasn't the game dude's fault. I came across glitches and camera issues like that a lot when I played as Tails too. A chimpanzee would handle the camera better. And again, your Photoshop techniques are terrible. Your Photoshop pictures are terrible. At least the music matches the sceneries. Ah, oh, thank you. At least, that's one decent thing about the game. The music's incredible. Well, let me guess, you're gonna say something like the angry video game nerd that it's worse than something. But that's exactly why they're worse. Hey, Realm Wars, I hope you have enough room for me in the Psychic Club. Congratulations! You guessed what he was going to say! Would you like a cookie? I thought they were called biscuits! Oh yeah, that's why I'm a stupid Brit. In all seriousness, anyone could have predicted that by now, not just you. That was nothing special. Isn't it rather ironic that you attack Chief Shadow for insulting the game, dude? And yet you just go ahead and pull 180 and do it yourself? What the hell? She wasn't insulting him. She was pointing out that anyone could have predicted what Game Dude was going to say. So she wasn't insulting Chief Shadow because he knew what Game Dude was going to say. But she did insult the people who didn't predict what Game Dude was going to say. Either way, but it's the same thing, Meta. Think before you talk. As for you, Roshatsu, how was I supposed to predict that? I don't even watch the Angry Video Game Nerds reviews. And that's the end of part two of Chief Shadow's commentary. And yes, there is still more to come, so stay tuned. The collision detection sucks. Hey, play Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. That game has worse collision detection. You're talking about Sonic 1 on the Genesis, right? No! 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 Shut up! Really, Meta, that's the best you've got? That's the best you can offer for a counter-argument? Wow. Point for wave! I think we've heard enough of the Nostalgia Critic's no joke. Uh, the one Nostalgia Critic clip that I think everyone might have heard over and over again might have been the Nostalgia Critic's not funny joke. Okay, let's just skip right to Wave 3 for 36's point. Right, did you even listen to what he said? Play Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose that. Ugh. That just raised my possible insults to 10. I could have thought of 8 other insults just with that one line. I'm not kidding. Ugh. We're in part 5. Almost done. Almost done. Let's get through this. Alright. Because the hit detection was fine in that game. Hey, Super Sonic 407, it's called Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis. Can you read? You won't find the glitches. The glitches will find you. Wow, Game Dude, what a line. You won't find the glitches, but the glitches will find you. Game Dude, you will always find the glitches yourself. No matter what, people will find glitches on their own command, whether it's purpose or accidental. No matter what. Half the game is nothing but button tapping and cinematics glued together. Why would you run through these loops when you don't have to and there's nothing to collect? I think they're there just for fun, kind of like the secret bases in the Pokemon games. 
Why is that even a big deal? It's not part of the review. Sonic doesn't leave footprints in the sand anymore. Please go back to the last point of the commentary because I am not repeating myself. Okay, dude, you really need to calm down before you have a meltdown. Okay, Rashidsu, imagine yourself commentating on a video that made you pissed off. You think you're... It's going to be a magic and rainbows, and you won't get mad. Uh, no, I think you would be pretty mad at the points that Gang Dude is making, or any other person you were angry at. <coughs> okay? The points that Gang Dude makes can infuriate anybody because they're so invalid, and again, don't give me the bullshit that it's a parody. And again, Roshetsu and Super Sonic 407 never said it was a parody. <laughs> And again, Rojetsu and Super Sonic 407 thought that it was a parody when they read the description of the game, dude. <gasps> wow, that was one long breather. If it's a parody, he failed epically because he's not funny. Please don't claw my eyes up for saying this, but I think Game Dude's jokes are kind of funny, actually. Are you kidding me? Sadly, no, I am not kidding. And if you don't find them funny, then please respect my opinion. Granted, the last two jokes Game Dude made were not necessarily funny. Okay, Meta, I'll give you that. You at least find the Game Dude to be a little bit funny. Okay, I can forgive that. That's your opinion. But what you said right there, his last two jokes weren't uh, weren't uh, funny at all. Why did you even need to bring that up? You know what? Never mind. None of his jokes are funny, and all of his points are bringing up are stupid. Ah, uh, seriously. About, put yourself in the position of Chief Shadow for a second, and then try and refute his arguments. I'm not trying to defend Chief Shadow, this review sucked. But, I mean, the commentary, oh, I hate him, I'm angry. Okay, but, put yourself in his shoes for one second, and then try to refute it again. Slides like he's figure skating. Okay, that is not figure skating at all. If you want figure skating, go to Google and check it out. How Sonic looks when he's sliding is a matter of opinion. Someone can say it looks like he slipped on a banana peel. Someone can say he's on a slip and slide. Okay guys, would you really confuse what Sonic was doing there for being uh, finger skating or slipping on a banana peel? Okay, slipping on a banana peel I can slightly understand. But even so, his knee was back and his foot was forward. That's a slide! Someone can even say he's having an ass race. Oh, thank you for giving me that thought. Etc. Or maybe this is just another joke he's trying to make, and you're not taking him too seriously. Supersonic 407, Rishutsu, can I ask you something? STOP DEFENDING THE GAME DUDE! And never runs as fast as he used to. He looks like he runs even slower because of the overly stretched dimensions of the levels. Hey, retard, there's a colored gem in the store available that allows you to double your speed. Try using it. Love the immaturity here. You're not proving that you're better than him when you're stooping to his level with the childish insults. Seriously, Rujetsu, are you deaf? That was not an insult! Also, could you lose the attitude? You're coming off as an asshole. Congratulations! You guessed what he was going to say! Would you like a cookie? In all seriousness, anyone could have predicted that by now. Not just you. That was nothing special. I stand corrected. Hypocrisy at its finest. And of course, Meta says his usual stuff, and I think I'm going to be skipping it anyways, because all he's saying is that he's explaining on why he said that what Rujetsu was saying was hypocrisy, even though that it was flat out obvious. Instead of the robots resembling animals like they should, they resemble unwanted crap deleted from Metroid Prime. Why are you comparing Sonic 06 to Metroid Prime? And besides, I like the robots in, in this game. Some of the rings are impossible to get. They wouldn't be so difficult if the camera didn't change angles. You don't have to get all the rings. You just need to collect enough to survive through the level. He's just stating that the camera is making it hard to get rings, which it does at times. Kinda hard to get even one ring in order to survive if the camera keeps interfering. Plus, maybe he wants to get all the rings to get a high score. Okay, if I'm correct, but if I'm not correct me on this department, if I'm correct, collecting rings doesn't automatically give you a high score. I thought defeating enemies and getting to the end of a stage as fast as you can does give you a high score. So I don't think there's any need to collect as much rings as you can. What's the problem with that? Or if the controls weren't so bad! Yes! No! Fuck Nozzle!
Okay, first of all, I am forced to play this. <laughs> Secondly, why couldn't you just land on the platform and then jump and get, try to get that ring again after you've landed the platform? Keep trying until you got it. Why couldn't you do that? This guy is unfucking believable. Now look at this! Sonic outruns this orca, jumps on flying pieces of wood, jumps on the orca's fin, and now logically, you'd assume that Jackie Chan's gonna jump to that nearby island. That's just impossible! I mean, think about it! Hey, whoa, 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 wait, 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 Supersonic for all seven. Please tell me I'm not seeing this. Please tell me you're actually counting a point bringer as a joke. It's not a joke. Even a homeless person would know that that is not a joke. It's a goddamn point bringer. You could clearly see that Sonic is facing in that direction and the island is over here. So if Sonic was to jump off the orca, he would land over there into the water where he'll drown. So how will he land on the island when he's facing in the wrong direction? EXPLAIN! It can't! It just can't! Whoa! Seriously! Point bringers! As a joke! And you tallying them! Seriously! You are really starting to lose my respect for you! Now I'm gonna be skipping Nerd Nick's joke since it was absolutely pointless. And I would be surprised if anyone laughed at it. Another nostalgia critic joke. For the last time, it's a point bringer! The way you're using these skits are not funny or clever in the least. I would have thought by now you'd have at least found a good one considering how many times you've used them. But no, instead, he clings up to the fin like a frightened cat, and now Tails has to save him. It's the lamest excuse to force you to play as Tails, who should have been following my ass to begin with. Hey, the characters appeared out of nowhere in Shadow the Hedgehog, and nobody's complaining about that. The other Sonic characters in Shadow the Hedgehog were support characters. Emphasis on support. The main player did not play as them, so no one complained about playing as them. It's not rocket science here. But what about Sonic Heroes? Huh, mate? You were forced to play at some characters at some parts. Huh? Sonic Heroes? Ring a bell? And what was he doing, randomly standing by the edge of the dog? He's assisting Sonic in rescuing Elise. Did you even watch the cutscene? To save Sonic, you hit the switch. But why would you want to spoil the fun? Okay, why is there even a gate here? Am I in a fucking aquarium? And why was it left open to begin with? Now look at that! It doesn't even fully close! Why doesn't the stupid orca just swim underneath? Well, game dude is asking, so I'll get answering. <clears throat> Alright, the reason why the gate didn't fully close is because it's low enough so if the orca does try to escape, it knows that it's too narrow for it to escape. And why can't it just jump over the sides in the other place? Well, those sides might have been electrified. Does that ever cross your mind? Also, game dude, why the fuck did you put Crash and that cat thing up on those two pillars right there? Seriously, that is not funny. Or go around! Look at it! How the fuck could it block the way? Okay, to quote Big Al 2K6, Who fucking cares? Nothing makes any logical sense. Okay, you don't need logic in video games. Where is the logic in that? I need logic in my video game. I wouldn't count that one because he only used two Shadow Blaze X8 clips in the entire commentary. Oh my god! A valid point! How does Sonic know the Oracle is trying to escape? Why did the Oracle try to escape the second Sonic jumped in its spin? It's all part of the gameplay and the level. Why were the other orcas trying to escape? And why did Sonic try to set them free instead of keeping them in prison? Ladies and gentlemen, we just hit ourselves another pointless moment. I mean, what asshole? Did you you saved me. No, he didn't. You saved yourself by jumping away and defeated the entire purpose of having to play as Tails. Now, could the infinite train, loaded with bullshit, be any longer? Well, let me ask you this. You mean the bullshit in your review? Oh, yes, it can. Well, I was sitting around making this shit. Up. Yes. How the hell did he jump from here all the way to here? Now there's no reason why he couldn't jump to that nearby island at the very beginning. Yes, there is. Go back to the, an earlier point of the commentary because I am not repeating myself. If you don't hit the switch, you have to watch this.
Another pointless joke, which I'm skipping. Okay, first of all, that would mean that you failed the mission. And secondly, ladies and gentlemen, we just hit ourselves another pointless moment. Oh, now he runs faster? If he ran faster at the very beginning, he would have caught up by now. Actually, he would have crashed into everything. One up? What's wrong with this? Uh... Are you seriously complaining about the icon that represents the one up? Who freaking cares? It means that you gain an extra life. It doesn't matter if it says one up or has the Sonic's head. This one is just plain fucking stupid. And I die two seconds later? You're doing it wrong. Why are they replaced by empty containers? What a crap full of fuck platypus. Wow, you completely raped angry video game nerds. What a shitload of fuck. And just proves that you are a total fucking ripoff. There's a little saying that goes, pot calling the kettle black. Oh, good God. Did you even pay the fuck attention? Uh, you know what? That's it. We're skipping this part. Yeah, I've been meaning to say this for a while now. I have no problem with people using jokes from other videos. I've done it myself. Wait a minute, 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 Rushetsu. Now you're saying that to have no problem with people using against them? Which is it? Do you have a problem with, with people overusing them or not using them at all? Because if you over, because either way is fine because, well, either way if you're going to see an overused amount of loss, you're going to see them in YouTube poops. So saying that people shouldn't overuse them kind of defeats the purpose of a YouTube poop, doesn't it? Heck, we just made a joke using the forced laughter scene from Final Fantasy X. But I don't use these jokes every chance I get because it eventually makes the joke stale. Imagine if we had used that Final Fantasy X scene over and over and over again. It would get annoying. Even the nostalgia critic knows when to put gags to rest. Please, Chief Shadow, find some other jokes next time! Okay, so I beat the level, but why does Sonic stop and pose in the middle of the chase? That's the result! That is to show how well you did- Riding the snowboard looks fun, but trust me, it sucks more than a vacuum. The controls are horrible. Yeah, the controls aren't the only thing that's horrible. Fuck! It's like riding a unicycle wearing a sumo suit moving a horse on a baby stroller through a bunch of winding hills. <laughs> no, don't go up! Oh, come on! It didn't even hit- Well, now I'm fucked. What? You could go right through it? What? I died? Of course you died. You didn't have any rings to begin with. Now, before, the lamest excuse- One sec, guys. Meta, WHERE THE FUCK ARE YOU?! ...forced you to play as Tails, but now, for absolutely no reason at all, you're simply just forced to play as some. Again, nobody complained when that happened in Shadow the Hedgehog, where the supporting character appears out of nowhere and offers you a mission to, to complete. Please refer to what Ryan said about supporting characters in Shadow the Hedgehog. And please refer back to an earlier point of what I said about Sonic Heroes because I refuse to repeat myself. Also, where the fuck was Meta? He didn't really appear much in this part. Oh well. Until the next part, guys. Wait a minute. The next part. That's the final part! Yay! Last one, last one, last one, last one, last one, last one, let's go! And that's actually worse because, well, they didn't even try! Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, it's the last part, let's just get this over with. You know what, I might as well just stop commenting in other parts like those. Also, if Tails was already about halfway through the level, then why didn't he just finish it by himself without waiting for Sonic? God, are you seriously nitpicking about the way the level works? Ugh, this is something I forgot to mention. This guy nitpicks. Constantly. This is unbelievable. Didn't you mention him nitpicking earlier? I thought you did. But even if you didn't, we know. We can see it for ourselves. It's kind of late to be bringing up the obvious. And not only is he nitpicking, but you're nitpicking on his nitpicking. Are they trying to save the world, or are they baton racing with invisible batons? Well, I couldn't tell you exactly what they're doing. Why? Because the story is a completely illogical fucking encyclopedia. Okay, the story deals with time travel and adds a twist.
twist into the what you got from the opening cutscene. If we don't return in time, Elise will die on board Eggman's battleship. That means... That means you travel back even further in time. I mean, if you can travel through time, then why should you worry about it? It would make the story shorter, and it will be a waste of your money. I mean, why should you run about it? Oh, you're gonna love this one. Shadow jumps into this portal. Oh, you son of a bitch. Unfunny joke is unfunny. Seriously, game dude, you're using the same, oh, you son of a bitch joke that the angry video game nerd used in one of his Superman reviews. And out comes Roost back. We? What do you mean, we? Maybe she was referring to her and Shadow. Shadow jumped into the portal. I don't know where the fuck you came from. Probably from the other side of the base. Now, this is where the game really takes it up the ass. Dying is easier than the kindergarten math test. Believe me. Okay, I will admit that looks like the most challenging and probably the most frustrating part of the entire game. But all you need to do is just keep collecting rings and you'll win. Trust me, those rings will come in handy. Oh yeah, go ahead and collect all the rings you can. Hopefully without getting hit by flying cars and debris, being thrown by that flaming tornado, and avoiding all the obstacles on the road ahead of you. Do all that and yeah, don't worry, you'll be fine. Okay guys, as much as I played of Sonic 06, I did not get up to this part. However, I have seen a playthrough on this game where there were massive gaps in this level. So, basically, you can survive through this level by just collecting rings and dodging the debris. The, pro the fact is, is that you just need to keep on heading in the direction of the gaps and you'll survive. How can we trust your word if you admitted to not playing the game? Playthroughs! Look them up! You don't know how easy or hard this level is, let alone if getting rings will help you at all. Not every Sonic game follows the same formula, you know. You don't want to fuck around in this death playground. Everything wants you dead. The almost unavoidable obstacles on the road and falling debris that comes out of nowhere and ensue in a fraction of a second, the camera by changing angles, the bad frame rate by making you run faster than the camera and crash into objects. Alright, I am forced to repeat myself again. This game was rushed because Sega was under pressure, alright? And also, just keep collecting rings. If you get hit and you lose all your rings, just collect more. It's not that hard. And ironically... Whoa, 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 what was that? What the hell was that? Replay that clip. I'm looking at this. You guys have seen that sign, right? If you manage to pause right there, you'll see what that sign says. How could any commentator miss that? Even the rings, because when you magically glide through them, the straightforward momentum hurls you into even more objects. Then stop using the light dash! Also, if you stay too close to the edges you die, if you jump too early you die, if you jump too late you die, and because you can only jump straight if you jump at the wrong angle you die, you will die again and again and again and again and again. I get the feeling that I remember this somewhere. Oh yeah! And right here was where part 3 had ended. There was one final part to the commentary, but unfortunately we weren't able to get the final part before he deleted it off his channel. You see guys, this is kind of why you download all the parts before you make your commentary. See, Kenji Immortal Wolf did that when he did his Joshua A42A commentary, yet you didn't get all three parts. Four parts, not three parts. Super Sonic 47 and Roshatsu downloaded the first three parts in time, but not the fourth part. Besides, the fourth part is basically the game to its final words and like Chief Shadow's final thoughts. It's basically two minutes long. Still would have been helpful if I downloaded it. Why exactly? <clears throat> okay, the rest of the video is pretty much just them summarizing it, and you know what? This is all I can really take. I've had it up to here. Okay, the commentary wasn't that bad, but there were moments that made me want to tear my hair out and rip my tongue out at the same time. Oh, Lord, my hurts right again. Some of the points you brought up were absolutely retarded, and also hypocritical, might I add, and I've shown you it. It made me feel like you were fanboys and fangirls of the game, dude, and you were defending him. Was that an insult I just heard? Yes. Yes it was, Shadowstar. 
Wow, really? You're using jokes from Shadowstar now, despite the fact that his voice is so boring, but if, even if he tried to make a joke with his voice, it would still be boring anyways? Wave 3 for 36. What makes you think that they're doing this commentary for the purpose of defending Game Dude? Because I didn't even know who the hell Game Dude was before Chief Shadow's video. Because they're making a commentary on a commentary on him? You've made commentaries on commentaries before. Does that mean you were trying to defend someone in those commentaries? No, it's due to the fact that, you know what, fuck it. Meta, you're hopeless. Instead of seeing the flaws in the comment side. Also, Ryan, Ryan, Super Sonic 407, where do I begin? You, you dropped the ball big time. Time. Some of those points you made were so retarded. I'm actually surprised didn't make that insult bar go up even higher than 10. But I'll leave it at 10 because I'm actually nice and I'm not going to point out the rest of them. Okay, where else? You should say you really needed to improve on that commentary, mainly because some of the points you brought up were also irrelevant and retarded. Okay, Chief Shadow, before you think I was defending you, you didn't. Again, what are the chances Chief Shadow is going to watch this commentary? Pretty high! Because he hates commentaries now, and hates being reminded of that certain commentary in particular. I know that Chief Shadow hates commentaries now and doesn't want to be reminded of this one, but the reason why I went on this commentary at first was not because I wanted to remind uh, anyone about it, it's just that the points that Rujetsu and Supersonic 407 made in that commentary were so retarded that of what I said in part 1. So retarded, I couldn't believe it. You were getting a little angry and weren't even pointing out the flaws in the review near the end. Then again, neither did Rushitsu and Super Sonic 407. Yes, they did. No, they did not. You know what? Fuck it. I'm just gonna end the video right here. Alright, final thoughts on all of them. Game Dude's commentary, I can say with just one word. CRAP! Chief Shadow's commentary, I can say this. Not bad. And uh, Rujetsu's and Supersonic 407's commentary, I can say this. Absolute garbage! Wave's commentary, I'll say this. Finally, somebody who actually did something right and commentated on this pile of garbage. Meta, why do you bother? You made it worse than it already is! Anyways, guys, I am over ADA Reality, and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, this file has been closed.